This lesson is titled, What are Dependent Sources? To begin addressing this question, let's see, look at this circuit schematic, which is a model for an operational amplifier. We see three nodes ready to be connected to the rest of the circuit in which the op amp is to be embedded. And these are labeled with node voltages V sub P, V sub N, and V sub O. The first two of these are considered to be inputs, the third an output. Now nodes and node voltages we are familiar with. And we also see two resistors. Resistors also need no introduction to us at this point. They are circuit elements with the constraint that V equals IR. And we see another circuit element that we've not previously discussed, the diamond-shaped symbol with plus and minus polarity reference signs. This is a dependent voltage source, and let us now focus on it. We've previously discussed sources of energy known as independent voltage sources. For example, a 9-volt voltage source says the voltage across me must be 9 volts, independently of how I'm embedded in the circuit in which I'm to be used. This new circuit element that we're looking at is also a voltage source, a source of energy. But its element constraint is that, oh, the voltage across me depends on the difference between two node voltages in the circuit. Specifically, here it's a constant A times the difference between node voltages V sub P and V sub N. So if we ask the nine independent 9-volt source, what's your voltage requirement? The answer is 9 volts, period. If we ask the dependent source what its voltage is, it has to look over its shoulder to see what the values of VP minus VN is. It depends, quote unquote. Now, there are several physical entities that are of interest for electrical circuits that are modeled with dependent sources. Let's look in more detail at this operational amplifier. Let's have a look at the operational amplifier, in this case taken from a parts bin. Actually, let me just shorten the name to op amp, as is generally the case. The particular specimen looks like a small piece of plastic with eight metal connectors or leads, four on one side, four on the other. This is the so-called dual inline package in terms of the lead arrangements. What does this have to do with our circuit model? Well, three of these leads, or connection points, or nodes, correspond to the input and output nodes on the schematic model, V sub P, V sub N, and V sub O, the output voltage. I'd also like you to note that power supplies will be attached to this operational amplifier, to this chip, a positive DC voltage supply labeled with VCC, and a negative DC voltage supply labeled with minus VCC. These will enter into today's discussion. Of the remaining three leads, by the way, one is not used and two have to do with adjusting offset voltages and not germane to this discussion. What about that plastic though? Well, it's just a protective covering. If we were to etch away the plastic, we'd find a piece of silicon about a millimeter square and less than a millimeter thick. Let's have a microscope view of that. What we see under the microscope is an example of an integrated circuit in which the various circuit elements are built in and on a piece of silicon in an inseparable manner. The ones labeled with an R are resistors, the ones with a T are transistors, and that one up in the upper left-hand corner, CC, is a capacitor. Around the periphery of the chip, we see seven gold wires that are bonded to the chip. The other end of those wires go to the metal leads that we saw earlier coming out of the dual inline package. Now the circuit schematic corresponding to this collection of interconnected resistors, transistors, and capacitors is shown on the next slide. Okay, we can't really see the details here. But by using the dependent source model, we don't need to know the details. That's the point of the importance of dependent sources. By clever circuit design, these various elements function in a way as modeled by the dependent source. We do see the nodes where the DC voltage sources are connected. We see the nodes where the input voltages are brought to the op amp. And we see the nodes where the output voltage is. So as users of the op amp, as circuit designers who are going to incorporate the op amp into our systems, we generally don't need to know the transistor level details of the chip. The dependent source does an excellent job of modeling the combined effects of the circuitry and of the external power supplies. And that's a good thing. By again, clever circuit design, the values of the node voltages, V sub P and V sub N, essentially control the flow of power from the power supplies to the load in a manner modeled by the dependent source. And here is that dependent source doing an excellent job of modeling the combined effect of all the complicated circuitry and the DC power supplies. 
The dependent source we've been talking about so far is a voltage controlled voltage source. It's called that for self-explanatory reasons. It's a voltage source and its value depends on a voltage elsewhere on the circuit for the op amp. It was the voltage across those two input nodes. But more generally, we would say that the voltage is equal to mu times Vx, where Vx is the controlling voltage and mu is the voltage gain. Now, this is one of four linear dependent sources we want to talk about today. Another important dependent source is the current controlled voltage source. Again, we see here the symbol for a dependent voltage source, but this time that voltage depends on a current flowing somewhere in the circuit. The voltage is equal to a quantity times the current, and R is that quantity. R has units of volts over amps or ohms, in other words, a resistance. It's called a trans resistance because the voltage is in one part of the circuit and the current another. As the story goes, by the way, when the bipolar transistor was invented in the 1940s, the thinking was that they were developing a device that would represent a current controlled voltage source. And trans resistance was shortened to transistor as the device's name. As it turns out, though, it was better modeled by a voltage controlled uh, current source with a transconductance. So maybe they should have named it transductor. But history is that it is, and we have transistors. Speaking of transconductance, though, here's a third dependent source we wish to talk about, a voltage-controlled current source. Again, we see the diamond shape representing a dependent source. This time, there's a current reference arrow in it, though, instead of the voltage polarity marks. It's a, de it's a dependent current source. The current's controlled by a voltage, the proportionality is the transconductance, and this uh, uh, structure is also used, for example, in modeling field effect transistors, as well as bipolar transistors and other things. And so finally, we come to our fourth dependent source, the current controlled current source. The current generated by this source depends on some current flowing elsewhere in the circuit. And the proportionality constant is beta, or the current gain. I might mention that this is also used to model transistor action with the collector current being linearly dependent on the base current and the beta being perhaps on the order of 50 to 100 to 150 or so. I'd like to end by introducing the notion of active circuit elements. Active circuit elements require power supplies to function in the intended manner. If we build an op-amp circuit, we soon realize that that bit of silica is not much use unless the DC power supplies, VCC and minus VCC, are connected to it. And when they are, the op-amp behaves in the way predicted by the dependent source. And the dependent source models the effect of the active device and power supply or supplies. So dependent sources are very closely related to the concept of active devices. This does bring us to the end of this lesson titled, What are Dependent Sources? And we may summarize by noting the introduction here of four dependent sources. The voltage-controlled voltage source, current-controlled voltage source, voltage-controlled current source, and current-controlled current source. As always, I thank you for watching.